DIY Huntress, and today I'm going to show you how I transformed a funky slab into a funky coffee table. Let's get started. Let's get started. Come on. I teamed up with my friends at Rustolium to help make this project come to life. Time to get funky, 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 funky. Everybody clap your hands. Oh God. All right. Ooh. I have been wanting to make a funky live edge coffee table for the longest time and now that we have moved into a new apartment this just seemed like the perfect time to do it and recently I was able to check out a local slab shop near me and I found this super awesome cookie that I knew I just had to have and turn into a piece of furniture. Now, when I work with slabs that are unfinished, one thing that I really like to do is check for level before I get started. This is just to make sure that the surface I'm working with is even. Luckily, the slab was pretty level, so I did get started on this entire process by just using my belt sander to smooth out the surface and to see what I was working with. Now, one thing that I really loved about this slab was that there were all these funky looking bug holes and really cool pieces of character that I just did not want to lose. So instead of like boring out all of these holes, I decided that I wanted to kind of keep them and encapsulate them in some resin. So I started this process by taping up the bottom of the slab so that I could pour some resin in and that resin would not leak out after I poured it. After taping up the slab, I then flipped it on over and I decided to use Varathane's Super Glaze High Gloss Epoxy in an aged wood finish to fill in all of these voids. Now this is a two-part epoxy system. There's a part A and a part B, which is the epoxy and the activator. I poured them into separate cups, then mixed them all up together just like you would a traditional epoxy resin product. And then it was time to pour it into all of the voids. One of the things I absolutely love about this product is that you will always get a consistent coloring no matter how many times you mix it or how much you use because the coloring is already pre-mixed into the epoxy. So that made this absolutely perfect for this project. I actually also ended up using this product to finish the entire slab later in this process as well. So I will show you how to do that later on in this video. But for now, I just wanted to focus my attention on preserving all of those bug holes and all of the voids and cracks and all of that wonderful stuff that I didn't want to lose in the character of the wood. And I did that by filling them up in a couple of different passes and allowing them to dry in between passes. And then I allowed everything to sit for about a day before I then removed the tape from the underside of the slab. In fact, this whole portion of this project gave me like intro to DIY Huntress beginner woodworking resin vibes because the first resin pour project I ever did on my channel was also a funky slab and I used a very similar process so if you are new to epoxy resin you may also want to check that video out for a couple of quick tips. But back to focusing on the build. So as you can see, after that resin had cured, I did do a lot of sanding to try to remove some of that excess resin. The portion I'm working on now is actually the underneath of the slab. I also used some mineral spirits to get rid of some of that sticky tape residue, but I was feeling kind of like this was taking a little longer than I wanted to. And also this was a very thick slab. So I decided at this point to focus my energy on flattening it a bit and taking off some of the thickness. This part of the project is about to make lots of people very happy because lots of people have been asking me to make one of these on my channel in the comments and I've been procrastinating, but no more friends. Ta-da! I finally made a router sled. The worst part about this is that I've been putting it off for so long and it probably took me 30 minutes to make. I am going to flatten the rest of the top of this slab using my router. I'm not going to cover how I made this in this video because I actually used plans from my friend Brandon over at Walker's Woodworks. I will link the video that I used to reference and make this sled down below in the video description so go check him out and go check that project out. I'm really mad at myself that it took me this long to make this thing but um, let's flatten a slab. So I have definitely flattened slabs in previous videos before and I typically use a handheld power planer for this. You can actually see that in action on my resin river table video, but I wanted to try something different here. A lot of people were, you know, recommending that I try a router sled, so I did decide to make one and this worked beautifully. 
Seriously, it just made my life so much easier. In the future, I will make a bigger router sled and I will also get myself a plunge router, but I did use it with my smaller compact palm router and that worked just as well. So after flattening one side of the slab, I then flipped it over, flattened the other side, and then moved on to cleaning off the bark using a couple of accessories that fit in my drill, but I'll link those for you below this video as well as in the blog post. And at this point, I also moved on to cleaning out that gigantic crack in the slab, but I feel like at this point in the project, I made a vital error and here is what happened and I'm not sure if it's because of me doing this. So, let's be honest. This isn't going the way that I had hoped. Um, I'm kind of bummed because I spent so much time yesterday flattening this slab and getting it to a point where today I didn't have to do like any other prep work. I could start the finishing process, but it doesn't look like this gonna happen. So I guess, I don't know if it's from when I cleaned out this or the humidity or the combination of the two, but last night I definitely had to kind of like walk away from this thing and here's why, let me show you close up. This was totally flat and I cleaned up this entire space here. I got rid of some debris in there, gave this thing like a nice coat of sanding and then I went inside for dinner. I came back and this is what happened. So this has happened for one of two reasons, either one, that piece that I got rid of in the middle of the crack to clean it up was probably holding this together. And two, the humidity outside. It's been pretty chilly here since I brought this slab home and all of a sudden today and yesterday were like 90 degrees. So that could be it too. But as you can see, this thing twisted a little bit. So this side is slightly higher now than this side, which really sucks. So what I'm gonna have to do is, good thing I did not take the router sled apart. I have to bring this back to the router sled. I have to flatten this side of the slab again, flip it over, flatten the other side again with the router. And then once that's done, I can put bow ties in here to stabilize the crack because the bow ties aren't gonna help with the difference in height. They are gonna help with stabilizing the crack. A little bit of extra work that I wasn't budgeting for, but I want to do this the right way because if I do it the right way, it's going to turn out beautiful and then we won't have problems in the future. So let's go flatten the slab again. So pretty self-explanatory, but in the words of Alanis Morissette, you live and you learn. I've actually never worked with a slab of this thickness with a crack that bad. So now in the future, I will just be a little more conscious about what I'm removing where. But that being said, like I mentioned, at this point, I did have to flatten the slab again. So I flattened one side, shimmed the portion of the slab that was unstable, flipped it over, flattened it again. And then it was time to move on to stabilizing that crack so that no more weird stuff would happen. And since we are already on the topic of doing things for the first time, I decided to try my hand at making my first set of bow ties. And the idea behind the bow ties, if you're not familiar, are that they are a decorative way to prevent the crack in the slab from widening any further. So they are decorative, but they also do serve a purpose. I've never made these before. I've been so intimidated, but I actually got my hands on a template a while back. And it not only made this entire process so easy, but so approachable as well. I will link a video for how this system works if anybody is curious. You can check that out below this video. But that being said, what I had to do was I had to cut out the actual bow tie itself, and then I had to figure out where I wanted it to go on the crack, and then also make an insert inside of the crack where I would then inlay this bow tie in there using wood glue. Honestly, I was so nervous to cut this portion out, so nervous, because you only get one shot at it, and if you mess it up, that bow tie ain't gonna look so hot. So I really took my time here to kind of figure out the system. I actually did a couple of practice passes on a different piece of wood before doing this, but once I felt comfortable, I then cut out that spot to inlay the bow tie in and to my surprise it actually worked out really well i almost wish that i had a wider shot of the happy dance that i did once i figured out that this bow tie fit because it was honestly so ridiculous and yeah once that first one was in i then repeated the same exact thing on the second one and i feel like these things turned out pretty awesome and i have never felt like a legitimate woodworker until i saw these bow ties in this table
Now, after running the dry fit for the bow ties and figuring out that everything fit really beautifully, I then used some wood glue to add the bow ties into the table permanently. There were a couple of little gaps, like these were definitely not 100% perfect, which I wasn't expecting because it was my first time doing this. So in order to fill those gaps, I just added a little bit of wood glue into the gaps and then used my sander to sand around the bow ties and it filled those gaps beautifully and it looks so seamless. Like it looks kind of like professional did it. I know you can't see me doing this voiceover right now, but I'm basically brushing some dirt off my shoulder and giving myself some pats on the back because I'm really proud of those bow ties. But anyway, once those bow ties had dried, it was time to move on to finishing. So I sanded the entire table to 220 grit, and then it was time to move on to my final coats of epoxy. And just like I used that Verithane Super Glaze Tinted Epoxy in the Aged Wood Finish to fill in the voids, I used the same exact product. And this product was literally perfect for this table because not only did it provide this beautiful consistent color but it also provided a really nice thick finish for this slab which prevented me from having to do like 10 coats of varnish in fact i only had to do two or three passes of this epoxy resin and it really finished so beautifully and it self-leveled so wonderfully i really loved the way that the first coat turned out so after using that aged wood finish for the first coat i just used the same product in clear for the last two coats and I am so happy with the way this thing turned out. Another awesome thing about this epoxy finish was that after I allowed it to cure for a couple of days, I was able to flip the entire slab over and very easily clean up any drips using my sander. At this point, the slab was super stable and I probably could have left well enough alone, but I did decide to just add a quick oil-based finish to the underside of the table, just as an extra precaution. Again, probably not mandatory. But after doing that, I allowed the entire slab to dry for another day and then it was time to install. Install. From the get-go, I knew that I wanted to use really beefy metal legs for the bottom of this slab, and my friend Chris from Four Eyes, we've collaborated on this channel before, actually designed these awesome legs along with Semi-Exact, and I got a chance to try them out on this new table, and they were literally perfect for this slab. I love it! I love table. I am so stoked about the way that this table turned out and can we talk about those beautiful bow ties? Like who am I? Seriously. Funny enough, I actually built this table for my apartment but my mom loved it so much that she decided to claim it so it now lives in their living room which I absolutely love because watching my family sit around it and enjoy it on a regular basis has been so epic. This project was filled with so many firsts for me, which I absolutely love because the whole point of woodworking is to grow and learn and try new things and to make something that just didn't exist before. And that to me is so rewarding. I mean, let's be real, I'm also pretty excited about the fact that I now know how to make bow ties and I cannot wait to add them to pretty much everything in the future. I hope that you all enjoyed this project as much as I did. If so, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more projects in the very near future. This is going to be an awesome summer filled with so many projects and I cannot wait to share them all with you. But until then, friends, thank you as always for sticking along and riding along with me on this journey. You are so awesome. See you very soon for another new project. But until then, friends, happy DIYing.